throughout both your life and your career. There will absolutely be things that change your journey forever. We could be talking about a relationship that you started or ended, or maybe a decision to move somewhere in the world, or maybe a decision to acquire a certain set of professional skills. All these can either positively or negatively impact your life. In this video, we're gonna talk about how a cybersecurity certification, specifically the Security Plus from CompTIA, changed my career forever. First, I wanna take you back in my life to the year 2012. At that time, I was working in a sales job and I made the decision that I needed a career change into something that was more interesting and enjoyable to me. You might be thinking that I'm talking about cybersecurity. Honestly, you're jumping too far ahead because I really didn't know which path that I wanted to go. With that being said, I was, however, looking at master's degree programs, but it was more of a discovery phase to see which possible options interested me. I looked at just about anything that you can think of, including tech-related areas like cybersecurity and computer science. Much like many of you, I'm sure, trying to get into this field, you probably have some doubts about if you have what it takes or if there's a bunch of prerequisites that you need to take in order to prepare. Can I be real with you? I had those doubts too. Since I had pretty much landed on going back to a university program, I began studying for the GMAT and the GRE, which if you aren't familiar with them, they're basically entrance exams to help you qualify for a certain level of school based on your score. The better the score, the better the school you can attend. They're fairly traditional style exams with reading, math, vocabulary, and those kind of topics that you might learn in high school or early on in college. But at that point, it had been years since I had been studying those subjects so I had to refresh a lot of that knowledge. When it came to taking both those exams, I scored decent enough to get into some decent schools, but it wasn't like I was in the top 1% of test takers. Why is that? I think a large reason is that throughout traditional schooling, everything is so cookie cutter, and most people don't really learn how to learn at a very high level, at least in the United States, but it is what it is, at least for my story. Anyways, fast forward to when I finally landed on a degree program in cybersecurity, where I didn't have to take any prerequisite classes and got to start on the classes right away. I would say that in my degree program, this is where I really started to identify how to learn at a high level and began using strategies like Pomodoro timers to understand topics that I had never seen before. But why does that matter? Well, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, I landed an internship with the Northrop Grumman Corporation, which is a defense contractor here in the United States, not that long after I started my degree program. That meant that I had to adhere to the DOD 8570 mandate which requires specific certifications for specific jobs. Now, I just wanna take a few minutes to real quick show you what the DOD 8570 is, because typically a lot of questions come up regarding this actual requirement or this mandate. And again, this is just gonna to apply to Department of Defense related jobs in the United States, because that's who makes the mandate is the DOD or the US Department of Defense. So that would be like military contractors, government contractors, defense contractors, whatever kind of terminology that you want to use with it. Basically, somebody that works for an organization or that deals with the government is typically who's going to need this kind of requirement to be satisfied. So if you go to Google and you search for DOD 8570, you'll find that it's basically the first website that comes up from the military or the U.S. government. And this is the web page that you'll see, and this will show you exactly what you need to find. But if you scroll down here, basically what happens with the DOD 8570 is it breaks down certifications based on job roles, and it puts them into a chart, and then you have to kind of distinguish which kind of job is gonna require which kind of certification. So you can see here, we have IAT level one, two, and three. IAM level one, two, and three. And then you have these other categories as well. So typically what happens with these different levels is the higher the level, the more responsibility that position has, right? So a management level position is going to require one of these IAM level positions. And then at like a director level, then you would need something like a level three. And that's kind of the general idea here. So within the Department of Defense and those kind of jobs, typically the requirement you're gonna see or the certification that is most commonly meeting this requirement is gonna be the Security Plus. Now you can see the Security Plus starts at an IAT level two certification in this chart. So technically you could get any one of these certifications in this box or something higher. So you could get a level three certification as well, and that would then satisfy the level two requirements. 
Now, we also sometimes will see where a level one of an IAM or one of these other levels of the IAM level will actually allow you to satisfy that too. Sometimes that could not be the case. It really just depends on what that specific job and that specific contractor are actually going to call out. But again, typically people will do the Security Plus because that is the most common certification. That's what you're going to see a lot of military people members getting as they're kind of going through their training. And that's just typically the one to get. But again, you could go with the higher level certifications and still meet that requirement. Now, this is an article that CompTIA has regarding the DoD 8570, and they'll go ahead and just tell you a little bit more about what this actual requirement is if you're interested and you want to read in more of kind of a summarized format because the mandate is an actual mandate. So it's not going to be just a paragraph of certain requirements or just that chart. It'll be an actual explanation of the actual mandate. But I will leave this article link in the description as well as the link to the DOD 8570. So that way you can see the actual information for yourself and become familiar with it. Now, there are some newer mandates and newer requirements that are shifting in that space. So the DOD 8140 and some other stuff that are, is happening as well. But this is a really good place to start. And you can see even in here, they mention the 8140 and kind of the differences between them. And then the last thing before we get back to the rest of the video is I went on to Indeed.com, which is a popular job searching website. And I just searched for DOD 8570 and we had 5,419 results come back. Now, keep that in mind, that's not all the jobs out there that are going to need to satisfy the DOD 8570. Those are just the jobs that have listed it in there. And again, because that's specifically related to these kind of jobs in cybersecurity, you're only gonna see cybersecurity kind of jobs or IT jobs, things like that, that actually have to meet that requirement. But you're gonna see things like an ISO, an information system security officer, you'll see a threat hunter, junior cybersecurity analyst, you'll see all kinds of different jobs that need that requirement met. And these are really good ones to look through and apply to if you can meet the requirements. My internship requirement to get the Security Plus from CompTIA if I wanted to do any kind of hands on the keyboard work, but I didn't know that until I actually started. My internship was only going to last three to four months, so I had to really move quickly if I wanted to get that experience. I began taking a bunch of notes as I was reading through my study guide book, and I was also constantly watching a video course from CBT Nuggets to really drive home those concepts. One thing that I saw is that when you're learning difficult concepts with a lot of content, you really have to get good at organizing your notes and fast if you wanna be successful in a short amount of time. I never could have imagined that I would spend so much time making my notes look good and easy to reference as I did. If you don't know, I did pass the Security Plus from CompTIA on my first try and I was so excited. Not only did I have a bunch of new knowledge in my brain, but it also taught me some valuable things for my career in cybersecurity. First of all, the process taught me that I can do this. I mentioned it earlier, but especially if you're coming from another career field, there's more risk and uncertainty or doubt when you're trying to transition into cybersecurity. Honestly, you might even be a bit scared because you have no idea if you're truly capable because technology jobs are intimidating, whether people want to admit it or not. When you first get that certification out of the way, regardless of which one it is, you should feel like you can do it too. I believe that just about anybody can make it in the cybersecurity career field. And if you don't, it's because of other reasons and not because you aren't capable of doing it. The second thing that I further developed and helped me do was learning how to study at a high level. I'd say that a lot of the stuff that I learned in my cybersecurity career so far has been tremendously more complicated and difficult to learn than anything else in my life but it came with time and learning progression, not overnight. Since I started studying for the Security Plus, I find myself constantly researching ways to better understand and study information because I want to be the most efficient and effective learner that I can be, but it began with just diving into the material. You aren't going to have all the answers right away, but you're going to learn a lot about yourself and the best way for you to personally learn, especially if you self-study some of the areas, which no matter what, you're going to have to do at some point in your career. The third thing that Security Plus did for me was it continued my natural curiosity about technology topics. Many people think they have an idea of enterprise technologies before getting into this career field until you start pursuing it and you realize you know almost nothing. That feeling might scare some people, but it also might excite others like it did me. You learn a lot about one topic, then you move on to something related, 
Then another topic, all while you're constantly asking questions and researching the answers. You have to be curious in this career field and not afraid to experiment with technologies. Of course, in a lab environment first, but get out there and try things. That's especially true for unconventional configurations or use of technology so you can really see how things interact. Question of the day, what's something in your life or your career that's changed you forever? Let me know down in the comments section below. Look, I'm not saying the Security Plus from CompTIA is gonna be the thing that changes you forever, because likely you're gonna have different experiences than I did, and that's okay. The main idea that I want you to take away from this video is that you're gonna have something that changes you forever, and you should use that to drive your life and your career to continue success so that you can reach those long-term goals whatever they happen to be. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more resources related to this video, and I'll see you next time.